Hi, my name's Lisa Laroni and I'm a conservator currently working from home. So I thought I would bring to you museums from home. Right now I'm writing a blog on my favorite treatment of 2019 and I thought I'd share that with you. It was an incredible object that came to the conservation lab because it was requested for loan. So before any of our collection items go out for loan, we have to make sure they're safe to travel and display. It was an absolutely beautiful work, a watercolor by Frederick Elliott, but it wasn't just one watercolor. It was actually 27 individual little watercolors presented together with a window mount. And we call things a window mount because they have little windows cut out so you can see the artwork. From the front, it was incredible and looked so beautiful. Then we turned it around and looked at the back and it was a different story. As you can see, there is a lot going on. There's a lot of discoloration. We think that's because it might've been in a frame at one point with acidic wood discoloring the back. It also had all these little backing boards on the individual watercolors, which we didn't think were original because usually when an artist is painting watercolors, they work on watercolor paper. The way that these watercolors were attached to the window mount seemed to be with a lot of tape that was failing over time. A lot of materials aren't made to last and as conservators we often see things changing over time and failing and that's where we came in. So in discussions with the curator at the Maritime Museum we decided to do a major treatment. So very carefully I separated each watercolour from the window mount and it revealed details of the watercolour that might not have been seen. So I saw um, extra parts of the watercolour that were hidden beneath the window. I saw inscriptions, but also I saw a ridiculous amount of adhesive. So this adhesive was likely an animal glue and we think that because it was water soluble, which means when I introduced moisture, I could slowly scrape it off. It also had yellowed over time and it started to become really brittle and crack. And ultimately this was affecting the watercolour underneath. So I wanted to prevent any further damage. So we took that off. Also, when it came to the backing boards, we didn't think they were original. They were made from really acidic materials and I was worried this was going to start affecting the beautiful watercolors. So we decided to do backing removals. So I spent countless hours removing the backing with slow humidification and scraping back the layers. Um, there's a time lapse for you to see, which makes the work seem like it went like that, but I can assure you it took hours and fortunately I did because we've revealed some pretty incredible things on the back including inscriptions by the artists what we think were draft um, work so it was an amazing insight into the artist process and also little bits of artwork that might not have ever been seen other than by the artists themselves. We also then used light to examine the works more closely and this included using transmitted light which means we shine a light from underneath through the artwork and observe it, observe it through the other side and we found some really fantastic watermarks. So watermarks were often put in by water, uh, water mills, paper mills and it's kind of like an ownership mark saying we did this and so it usually includes the paper mills name and also sometimes they very conveniently put in dates. So we also know when the paper dates from. So there was only fragments of the watermark throughout the 27 watercolors, but we actually pieced some of the watermarks we found together and found it said J. Watman, 1886. And so we managed to find out that this watercolor paper was made by J. Watman in the UK in 1886, somehow find its way to Australia. So the, Fre the Australian artist Frederick Elliott then painted it in Australia of Queen Queensland, headlands and islands. So this major treatment was an incredible way to find out more about the object. Eventually, after we finished all the backing removals, we reunited it all back exactly as it was before, but in a lot better condition, so it will last for a long time. So this was my favorite treatment of 2019. I hope you enjoyed finding out more about the object and what I do as a conservator at the Australian National Maritime Museum.